man. What a rush. Did not have enough time, but I just got out on the water just pretty much uh, after sunset. I've got literally five, 10 minutes just to get across the other side there and get an anchor for the night. And I've just got the electric engine on for the first time. This is my little safety backup just to get me out of a tight spot if I need it. So I'm just cooking fish for the first time on the canoe. I'm out camping, doing a two-night test. <clears throat> first night I'm going to stay on the canoe, have a fire like this and see if I can cook fish. And tomorrow night I'm going to camp on the beach so I can practice the process of getting all the stuff off the canoe and back on again. So for the moment I'm just going to eat this fish and then get set up for the night. It looks pretty good. Check out the stars tonight. There's a couple of yachts here. I'm pretty close to civilization here. That's the glow from Township in the background. No moon yet. There will, it'll come up pretty soon. And there's the Southern Cross and the Pointers. And the Milky Way. This is the lid for this wooden crate I've got here and I've made the shape so it fits just across the top of the canoe so it's like, it slides forward like a table so I can sit comfortably and save all the footage from my different cameras and drones and stuff put it in a hard drive look at the footage make sure it looks okay and then also charge it I've got a bunch of battery banks in other places and uh, I can charge it all up make sure it's all ready to go for the next day then behind me I've still got access to the main bow hatch I'm going to just reach forward and get whatever I need out of there as well and I'm just hoping that this keeps the wind out it's completely still tonight it's the perfect night which is a bit unrealistic because on the barrier reef it's it's blowing 25 knots sort of most of the time so this is my possum skin rug I've got the fur on the inside feels a bit warmer that way uh, yeah this is where I'm staying for the night it's pretty comfy the bottom of the canoe's fairly dry which is good I still got a few little bits of leak to stop but it's mostly mostly stopped it's just so calm it feels like I'm on land but it's actually just a really still calm water outside see you in the morning <laughs> well that wasn't a bad night I was certainly warm enough I got a little blanket here as well as my possum skin rug. Flat calm. There's a little yacht you can see out there. That's my water barrel, 20 litre water barrel, which my shipwreck survivor mentioned as having a small water barrel. It was pretty dewy. There's those drops on the top of the canvas, which is really old and full of holes. So I had a few drops landing on me during the night. Not too bad, really. This is a uh, possum skin beanie, which is really quite warm. I can use the tail here and tuck it up. I've got another spare one there that I can wrap around my neck and make a bit of a scarf as well. I'm not gonna have any modern luxuries like a gas stove on this Great Barrier Reef expedition, which is only a few weeks away. But I don't wanna practice starving. <laughs> In fact, I need to put weight on. So I'm just gonna enjoy myself on this little testing trip and you know boil myself cups of tea eat lots of food have some dessert even have a beer while i'm at it because life's too short you've got to enjoy the enjoyable bits when you can how good Ooh. needs to cool down a bit so this is the hammock that I've got. This is actually a full hammock underneath here which I can sit in normally but your back gets a bit better if you spend all night in that. So I've got this other little stretchery bit which I'll pull out on the sides as well to keep my body flatter.
So the hammock folds out of the way and becomes a gear rack on the side there. But what I'm really pleased about is the water that's come in. That's all the water there is since last night, so more than 12 hours. And there's probably only a litre or two spilled in there, which is bloody great. It's all native beeswax that's sealed that. I've got a little bit more work to do, but that's um, really, really good. While I was packing up, I got chatting to the yachty next door. Turns out to be a guy called Rob Lovelace. And he's a YouTuber and he does reviews of people's baits. So I went over and had a chat about my boat and he put it on his channel. I'll put a link in the description for it. So right now I'm practicing poling. Just because this is the way I'll get around the shallows on the reef. <clears throat> It'll be too shallow for the rudder to be down. And these are the same poles that I use to prop up my big sail. But it certainly seems to work all right. I'm a little unpracticed at the steering, of course, but having done lots of other little trips in small boats, you end up getting very good at knowing exactly where to push and how much to push, and you can get quite accurate with it. I've got a particular pole for my GoPro in the car. That's one of the main things I wanted to test, so I'm going to head back to the boat ramp and pick it up. I retrieved the pole from the car and it's time to go test the sea anchors. So the square sides of that thing, the bottom of the square has two rocks and the top has floats and that should display out like a big parachute. There's not much wind at the moment so it might not look that effective. There we go, there's my big parachute. Looks good, looks like a big jellyfish. And this should swing my bow into the waves so whenever i'm in an emergency i can do this to help weather the biggest waves or if i need to change sails or if i'm drifting somewhere i don't want to be drifting it's just about to pull tight now Boom, there we go parachute and now the tail's gonna spin around downwind beauty Beautiful bush along here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of introduced weeds like bitu bush in there, which is slowly taking it over. Trying to suss out a place to camp on shore for the night. This place is looking okay. Let's just see if there's room for a, a tent. A little stingray there. Tiny. I bought my spear so I could spear stuff like this, but it's a sanctuary zone so I can't do anything. In fact that big sign over there says sanctuary zone. You're a safe little dude. I'm not actually sure if someone owns the land behind it, but one of the great things about Australia is you can't actually own a beach. And I'm going to be camping below the high tide mark. So the water's going to literally lap up where I'm sleeping, but so be it. I'm glad I tried the anchor setup early because it didn't go to plan. One of the anchors kept pulling out all the time. I tried three times and then I'd give it a big pull and it would just come out of the sand and I watched that it would just slide out sideways and uh, it's just poorly made actually. So I'm gonna get a different anchor. And anyway, I'm glad I found that out now instead of the barrier reef. So this crazy shirt is uh, what I found my research to be what ship, well, what sailors used to wear back in the mid 1800s. 
and my mum sewed it up for me. She basically doctored a couple of shirts that we bought from his shop. And same with my pants and uh, some other stuff that mum's sewing. So <laughs> thanks heaps mum for helping out. This is really quite practical though, because it's got these little cuffs that go over your hands. It stops your hands getting burnt. And you can do up this thing here, the sort of the piratey strings, and it comes in nice and tight, collar, lift up. So it's pretty practical, which makes sense, because that's, you know, that's why they used to wear this kind of stuff. Like I said, there's no point roughing it when you don't need to. And I'll be dreaming about food and drink. <laughs> But there's nothing else when I'm on this next trip. It's really nice camping ashore, particularly when it's not windy. It is a big hassle getting all the stuff on and off the canoe. And there is a risk, you know, when the sea comes up and the wind comes up at night time that you can lose the canoe You can, or a boat. I've done a lot of boat camping and it's, it's always nerve wracking when you do it. Obviously, in a sheltered place like this, it's not much of a problem unless a really big thunderstorm came up or something. And even then, it'd be okay, but on the open ocean, it's a, it's a different deal. So I'll probably only be doing this when I'm really e either in a river mouth or in the most sheltered place that I'm really confident that the anchor's not gonna drag. So this is my little campsite. That's the main sail. I'll just prop it up with one of the sail rests underneath and a fork stick, works pretty good. Sleeping on the canvas that I used as a cover last night. And I'm hoping it's gonna keep the wind out. I mean, there's no wind tonight, but that should make a nice shape for keeping out strong winds. Beautiful time of day for a walk. Nice scenic sign right in the middle of the beach. Now this is a bit of a recipe. I am gonna make the raw ingredients from coconut before I go, but I haven't had time because I've been concentrating on the canoe. This is just coconut flour that you get from rasping coconut meat into kind of like a powder. And that is um, coconut oil, which you refine out of the coconut, which you can do in the bush, which I'm gonna do as well. So that's just gonna have a nice amount of fat and stuff like that, which I'm gonna need a fair bit of. It's all congealed because it's cold. And finally, some honey, which I've collected native honey already from my hive and from my neighbor's hives and my shipwreck survivor had access to abundant honey, as he mentions in his book. Probably didn't get it out of one of those fancy jars though. And I'm gonna use hot water because it'll blend together better. And I'm sort of making like a damper, but it probably won't have enough structure to stand up by itself. So I'll just cook it in the tin once I've stirred it around. And I'll just sort of like treat it like damper, but in a tin and then I'll just spoon it out of the tin after. It's actually pretty good. I made this at home and I used the oven to bake it and I found it a bit dry and I just happened to have some boiling water left over there so I poured that in and it's kind of like an instant warm porridge and it tastes pretty bloody good. I like the instant nature of it because you don't normally have time or inclination to wait when you're really starving. It doesn't look like much but I reckon I'm onto something. <laughs> I'll tell you in three months, I'll probably hate it after three days. Luckily I woke up as light was just starting to glow through the tent because I could see that the canoe was uh, about to get stuck and it's a big low tide today so I just spent half an hour getting it further out so uh, otherwise I'd be stuck here till lunchtime by the time it comes back in again. Oh. So I've got a couple more things to test out, a couple more shots to get, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go back and put it on the trailer and go home. I got some good shots last night. I'm trying to put some stuff together for a media package. And I uh, got some sort of artsy, artsy sort of pose shots with 
olden day stuff, telescope and a few things, which is just requirement really. If you're gonna do something like this, you need little bits of footage, that, the kind of thing that the media like to see. So I've just spent uh, probably 10 minutes setting up this rig for a bit of a, a canned shot of me knocking uh, a spear, so putting my Woomera spear thrower onto the spear and then walking off into the distance. Obviously going to a lot of effort just to get this shot. It's a complete setup. I can't even use the spear because it's, it's a sanctuary zone, but uh, that's one of the funny things about when you're making a feature film, you've got to really get certain key shots which tell a story quickly. And I'm doing a media launch down in Sydney Harbour next week or week or two. So you basically need to give 30 seconds or a minute of footage to the media so they can go, oh yeah, that, that sort of tells a story visually and then they can put the words over the top. So it's a lot of faffing about and setting up and uh, whilst it, it's sort of rubbish from an adventuring perspective, uh, it's kind of not in a storytelling perspective, it's required. So uh, yeah, I, I just basically switch my reward from adventuring reward to filmmaking reward and then it is really nice when you just see those grabs later on at, in another piece of um, you know an, another setup or uh, another clip that somebody else has made it all makes sense but when you're doing it out here and it's bloody cold and you don't really feel like doing it it doesn't make any sense so all this effort paid off because the packages that I put together I sent out to the media and it got picked up almost straight away by the project which is like one of the main news shows prime time in Australia, national. And uh, instead of me having to go to Sydney, and there was a couple of issues with going there because of the weather and a COVID outbreak and stuff, they ended up coming to my house and recording it at my house uh, on live TV. So uh, yeah, the effort definitely paid off. I'll put a link to this interview in the description from the Channel 10 project site. So this, this thing basically, I've set it like on autopilot to do a certain loop. So it's just continuously moving from left to right and panning up and to the left. And all I want is the panning up to the left and the focus will switch from the spear tip to me walking off into the distance. Um, I was, I'm trying to figure out whether I should bother taking this rig. <laughs> it's, it's heavy, cumbersome and hard to set up, but um, just those shots can be just gold. Right now I'm just waiting for some sunlight because there's cloud up there and it's sort of thinking about breaking through and this shot will be so much better if there's light so I'm just going to wait for maybe 15 minutes see if I can get just a little 30 second window for some good light. It's now 45 minutes later and the sun has come out and I've got the shot. It's taken me like 10 takes to get to get the focus just right to get the panning just right. Anyway <laughs> um, it looks good enough on the back of the camera so I'll have to check it out when I get home. I'm packed up, ready to go, and the wind's popped up to about eight knots, which is great, because I want to test the big sail. A bit shallow there, and push it out a bit more before I step in. I've actually got the stern anchor out the front, because I wasn't happy with how the other one was working. So that's why I'm pulling it across the deck. So I've made some adjustments to the rudder since I used it last time. I basically doubled the size of all the pins. I've waxed all of the lashings so they're less likely to come undone and they're less likely to rot because it's all natural fibre rope. And I've also, quite happy with this, before I deploy it, I swing it down here and have it just on a pin there. So I can basically push off into a sea off a beach, pull this off and then drop it down into the water and this just swings back over at the top. So I've already figured out I want to make this higher up like that, but I'll adjust that later. But anyway, that's the plan behind that. All right, I'm looking forward to trying out this mount. And I thought about making this mount before I even built the canoe. Rudder support acts as a great stepping point when I push out. All right, success. For some reason I don't have as much rudder authority. I want to turn to the left, the port, and it's just not really letting me do it enough. It keeps swinging into the wind. <clears throat> but uh, with a bit more speed on it, it tends to track a little bit better. Solves, I just had it sheeted in too much. So I pulled the line too taut on the sail and uh, slacked it off a little bit now. And it's a lot better.
So this is the battery, that's the solar controller there, just showing how much uh, the volts is and the charging parameters from the bat from the solar panels, and that's the battery underneath. A 24 volt. So that battery allows me to charge all my gear and stuff, all my drones and camera gear and everything. And it also doubles as the emergency battery for this thing. I'm pretty much back at the boat ramp now. Now I'm just trying to make this battery go completely flat so I can see what its behaviour is close to being flat because it's difficult to know how much a battery has left in it if I need it in an emergency. Give you a hand, I'll give you a hand. Yep, yep, that's right. That's it. Yep, and then just probably sit down anywhere you like. Yep. I picked up a passenger. That's my mum. She's the first person other than me that's been on this boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty much killed this battery, it's showing uh, very low voltage now. So I'm gonna go back to the ramp and pack it all up, and that's a wrap. It's been a pretty successful testing trip, really. Lots of lessons learnt and things tested, and a few more refinements to do, but they're all gonna be small ones, which is a nice change. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, there'll be another video shortly. See ya. That was a bit of work. Wow. Yeah, it's